stage feels like someone else, but also more yourself than you've ever felt. This feels like getting to live in your imagination. Seeing everyone again brought back so many memories. Being able to be in this show will be one of the greatest treasures of my life. Hello and welcome back to Patreon with Cheese, your favorite podcast where we talk about TV shows and probably other stuff. I am once again joined by my incredibly good friend and editor, Elizabeth Esten. How are you doing, Liz? I'm great. I'm great. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about Encore again, and where are we this week? We're in Flint, Michigan. Hey, I've been there many times. <laughs> I believe all Don't Michigan is already to you. <laughs> like, okay, what what'd you think of this episode? Um, this was The Sound of Music. They're putting back on their production of The Sound of Music. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it more than the Beauty and the Beast episode, because it felt... I missed li- Adam Wachter. I, I miss I miss both... This one and the next one don't have Adam Wachter, and it made me so sad. I missed his presence. You don't realize how much you rely on him for quick one-liners until he's gone. Yeah, they they even brought in, like, the vocal coach who worked with, like, Bradley Cooper on Star is Born for one-liners. And he gets handsy. He gets handsy. And then, yeah, he touches everybody in weird places for, like, vocal coach purposes. And I've never worked with a vocal coach because I did theater tech, so. <laughs> um, I had a vocal coach for a while, and it was the same vocal teacher as Darren Chris because he was also a Michigander. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, he was very good. Never touched me, though. Um, would touch himself as to where he would want me to adjust myself. So that's how you should do But he would it. never touch other people because that's that's weird. Why would you do that? I guess in your I mean, I've never worked with Lady anything. Gaga, but I mean, you work with. I mean, I don't think he worked with Lady Gaga, honestly. Yeah, oh, Lady Gaga doesn't need vocal training. <laughs> not for, not for a, she's got it covered. Not for a star is born. I don't think. I think she was pretty established at that point as being a good singer. <laughs> Have you seen A Star is Born? Yes, I loved it. I've seen it twice. I, I literally just rewatched it last week, and I really like that film, except yeah. for the ending. It feels like they were like, eh, just take what happens in the other versions, I guess, because, uh, it, but it doesn't make sense in this one. It literally makes no sense in this one. But this one added a sad dog. Yeah. Which made yeah. it even worse, because you see the sad dog, and you're just like, no. I also saw this a week before it came out because I was in LA and my friend had gotten tickets to an early screening. So I was like, I ain't seen a stars but before all of you people. I saw it opening night, full audience, and my gosh, like I've seen very few musicals musicals that can really make you feel like you're in the event. Like it really makes the music come alive. My god, the way the 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 mixing on every song oh, yeah. made the room shake in the best ways. So good. So good. Yeah, Ugh. but don't touch people. No that's... matter how good a vocal trainer you are, don't touch people. Yeah, that's weird. Don't be this guy whose name I didn't write down. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember the director's name? Was it Koi in this one? It was Koi Middlebrook. I wrote it down actually. Okay, so. he's in this one and the following episode. Yeah, as well. which is a nice little like parallel. Like you see him in different situations. Yeah, I really think he handled this cast well. I feel yeah. like he brought them together well. He is much more emotional um, leaning than any of the other directors we've had. Like, this one's like, we're going to make you cry for a bit. <laughs> we're going to do an exercise where you talk to your high school self in your Which, head. What would you say to your high school self if you could <laughs> right now, Liz? Uh, wow, I'd say a lot to my high school self. Uh, first of all, you don't suck. Second of all, it's okay. Third of all, you will get a boyfriend. Just wait a few years. Um, I had my shit together in high school now that I'm looking back. I'm like, I was, I'm still dating the same person I was dating then. I was looking to be in the field I am right now. Um, I think I handled it pretty well since then, to be honest. Good job, past me. You didn't good, fuck it up somehow. Good job, high school Jess. High school Liz, on the other hand, was real sad. <laughs> real I mean, sad. Was anyone really happy in high school? Not really. I, I was, I, I, like, a lot of this episode is about, like, and all the episodes really are about people coming together and doing things that made high school better. Because high school sucks. Yeah. In, like, its classes and structure and all that other stuff. And also the popularity stuff, if your high school even has that. 
which I think most high schools do, but I don't know. I don't think Michigan high school. I, I didn't get like the popular kid vibe from these kid, the, this group. I that's it was in my high school at least. I got right. that vibe. But I think a theater for me, even if it was just building sets till 1030 at night, was a weird escapism I enjoyed, even though my sleep schedule was ruined and I never got my homework done on time. Yeah, homework does. How bad does homework affect you now? <sighs> That's true. But also my eight, my my senior year, my teacher was my math teacher was also my crew teacher. So I hung oh. out with him way too much. But also, I asked him once if I could write Tech Week on my homework, and he said, no, do your homework. And I'm just like, but you know where I've been all night. <laughs> I have a good excuse. <laughs> He's like, no, do your homework. So I did it the period before um, I had to go to math, which um, is when I had a free I, period. Can I be the horrible person to explain the amount of academic dishonesty I took advantage of throughout my entire years of high school? <laughs> go for it. I think I've brought this up before where for test I had a friend of mine that had a photographic memory yep. so he would just tell me the letters in order and I would just memorize that and then ace the test later that day. Um, homework. Um, I would just give him the sheet. He would fill it out in five minutes and I'd turn it in and I'd know the answers would be correct. I was a bad, bad student that cheated the entire time. Did you have a junior project? No. Okay, so we have a junior project where it's basically life planning and budgeting and all that, and you had to find things on the internet, figure out house payments, all that shit. Um, no one else knew how to use Photoshop, so I just Photoshopped everything to fit the math I wanted. Um, I cheated. I was a horrible cheater, and no one ever called me on it. Not a single person um, ever called me on it. I never cheated in high school. <laughs> Um, no. I was bad because no. I didn't take it seriously at all. I really did not take any school seriously. I probably should have, but. I mean, in the end, it doesn't really matter. It has not affected me any. I am not a worse off than anyone else. The exactly. person that gave me all those answers is currently a high school teacher, and I make twice what he makes, so. You're thriving. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you're saying. Yes. Uh, what I'm saying is being good at math and being able to get a bunch of A's won't get you very far after that. Gifted kid syndrome. Look it up. Yeah, that's true. I was good at math, though. What's the square root of 144? I said I was good at math. That's why I asked you. No, there was a past sentence. I'm no longer good at math. <laughs> oh. I, I became a communications major and it got rid of all my math skills. So. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, so, how was their performance of The Sound of Music? Honestly, I don't like the sound of music that much. So hey, it's very long. It is so long, and I love they in the episodes of the show that aren't Disney musicals. They always have a segment where they summarize the show. Yeah, which they probably should do for the Disney episodes too, because you know not everyone has seen Beauty and the Beast. So yeah, basically everyone has. Yeah, but still, like summarize it for the kiddo kiddos who are not might not know. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh. I, I thought they did a fine job. The source material isn't my favorite, so it's just a bunch of... It's a romantic drama, and then in Act 2, the Nazis show up, and it's like, hi, Nazis. It is so jarring, especially in the movie, because the transition, it's like, you think the movie's over, the, they got together, and it's like, wedding dissolved to a swastika. No, it's worse. <laughs> it feels like a twist ending. It's worse. There's an intermission slide. No, the intermission. The intermission um, is much earlier. The intermission oh. goes when Maria leaves, and oh, then yeah. she comes back, and the romance comes in. Yeah. It's literally like wedding swastika. Nazis. <laughs> it's like forty-five oh, more minutes, guys. That's what I was a kid. I didn't like this because I liked the romantic drama part. I liked Julie Andrews singing happy songs and kids learning about music. But I didn't like. Then the Nazis showed up, and I'm eight, and I'm like, why are the Nazis here, mom? That everything changed when the fire Nazis attacked. That everything changed when the Nazis showed up in Act 2. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, from that point on, there are no new songs. That is another reason why that part drags so much. There yeah, is not they a, just reprise it's all reprises. Shit. It's like, I've heard Edelweiss before. I don't need to hear it again. I'm performing hey, for the Edelweiss Nazis. Edelweiss is a national treasure. I know Edelweiss is great, but Christopher Plummer hated it, so... <laughs> I mean, Christopher Plummer also had an affair with the 16-year-old daughter of that film. What's... Oh, God. Okay. Burn him. I think... He... I don't think she was really 16. Yeah, I figured. Her character was 16. It's still... Um, it's like it's like when you hear that Matthew Morrison and Leah Michelle dated while Glee was in production. They did what? 
Uh, they did what now? This is true. Early, well, they not while Glee was in production. It might be a little before. I don't have the exact timeline, but around okay. the time Glee was in production or before, Leah Michelle and Matthew Morrison dated. Wouldn't that make her like like nineteen and him like forty eight or whatever? I am unclear about their ages as, as at the moment, but they it's a there's a rumor, or at least it was semi confirmed that they dated for a time. That's gross. And when you hear about it, you can't watch Glee the same way again. Especially the I mean, episode where Mr. Shu and, oh, I mean, Rachel has a big old crush on Mr. Shu and Matthew Morrison's character is like just trying to get her to not have a crush on him. Glee is just rough to watch in general nowadays. Yeah. Um, the real world got dark for these people. All of them. Not not a single person left on scorn. Sadly, Leah Michelle seems to be the least amount of like damaged in general. No, that's from not all true. That. It's not true. Why? She got exposed last year for being. Like, I mean, yeah, but she's racist. still alive. Is she, yeah, she is still. She's still breathing. Well, she's just in yeah, the Spring Awakening I mean. concert. She still has a career. She still got that Amber Riley. Um, she deserves a better career. She's very good. Preach. It really deserves um, way more than she's getting right now. And Naya Rivera, very rest tragic. In peace. Um, I cried I when I heard said, about it. Um, I, I, from the point I heard that, I knew Andrew and I couldn't cover Glee anymore, so we stopped doing that. It got real sad real fast. Um, what's his name? Um, Mark Sailing, child, oh, child predator, child predator who killed dead? himself in prison. No, the day of his hearings, the day oh, he was sentencing. That was right. That's himself. right. Um, and, and Corey, what's his name? Corey, Corey Monteith. Monteith. I, I kept wanting to say Finn Wolfhard, but I know Finn was the character's name. Yeah. Um, that very, was the, very sad. That's the reason I rage quit back when I was watching it initially. Because right after Cory Monteith died, they're still airing episodes he was in. I couldn't watch it. Yeah. So I quit, yeah. and my mom and my sister are like, we're going to keep watching. And I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. I can't watch Cory Monteith be on screen when I know he's not here. So I had since stopped watching, but I returned for the f- the quarterback episode. Um, Honest, and he, late yeah, season Glee is terrible. I want to emphasize this. There is a part where they sing, what does the fox say with puppets in season five or six? Um, and Darren Chris is pretending to be into it. And Kevin McHale is visibly uncomfortable by this entire thing. And they left the shot in the final scene. And it's fucking hilarious. Like, you can see him being like, this is bad. Oh, but the quarterback episode is legit one of the best things that the Glee team has written in a very long time. Are you all right? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I thought you were getting emotional about the Glee quarterback episode. It made, I had not seen it when it aired. I watched it when I was binging in quarantine and I legit cried (laughs) at times. So... So the girl that I had a crush on at the time, who is now my eight-year-long girlfriend, um, was a big leak. So I would watch the show so I could have something to talk about with her. Um, so I did watch at this point, and I watched the quarterback episode. And man, that was a rough sit. For even me that like watched the first season, I was like, it's fine, then left, and then I returned later on to like, oh my god, what's going on? Look at all these that new people. still worked. Look at all these new people, and someone is... T- no, I... It's like a weird meta narrative thing that I find brilliant. It's just like it's a bunch of actors coming together to mourn the loss of a friend, but it's also them as characters mourning the loss of a friend. And it's Lee and Michelle both mourning her fictional and real life boyfriend simultaneously. It's like it's... It explode head, exploded head meme. Uh, speaking of exploded head meme, remember the school shooting episode? Oh, my oh God. was that not a good transition? No, no, it was. It was. There's a lot to say. It actually connects to the next episode of Encore. <laughs> because in the Grease Glee arc, Kitty gives Marley an eating disorder by constantly shrinking her costumes. What? This is a real what? thing that Glee did. Um, and then in the school shooting episode, the Kitty, in complete duress, admits to Marley that she gave her the eating disorder. And Marley was, Marley was like, oh, that, that's, that's really bad, but I'm going to die. I might die soon. So, okay, I forgive you. That episode might be the most offensive thing I have ever seen air on, like, actual television. Like, probably since, like, Birth of a Nation aired on TV for the first time. Like, my God. Oh, God. It, honestly, it was so bad. And, like, there, there, there's no consequences to it. Because Sue was fired for the incident, even though it was... um. I think it was Becky who yeah, accidentally Becky. dropped the gun and nothing happened. 
Um, you shouldn't bring a gun to school. I think that's that's a, a go-to rule. That's a go-to rule, but it's Sue, got, Sue gets fired because it's in a safe in her office, so she takes the blame for it. And then the next episode, she's just there. It's like, hello, I'm back. I did not get fired. <laughs> like, Remember for a season when she was, like, principal and then doesn't use that authority to shut down the Glee Club, even though we've set up for many seasons that that was her goal? <laughs> It's so bad. I like also the also not to the also like there is a when Sue gets fired because the Glee Club gets her fired and then she roofies Principal Higgins, puts him in a hotel bed and takes fake takes pictures implying they had sex and then blackmails him and says I'm going to show these to your wife unless you give me my job back. That show had some dubious morals. This was um, in the and... early seasons too when it was good. It was never good. I feel in like. Quotes. I feel like that is a generalization made by a bunch of it's like it's apologists. like it's like grading on a curve. It's like this show's really bad, but compared to season six, this is pretty good. I mean, it's impressive um, what it was able to accomplish as a show back in the olden days. Um, I mean, Kurt works. Nothing else in those early seasons yeah. work. Kurt works. Uh, Blaine doesn't even work because he makes bad decisions as it goes on. Yes, he does. Doesn't he, like, cheat on Kurt? He No. Yes, he does cheat on Kurt with a random guy on Facebook. Oh, Facebook. We don't even know I his name. Rem- <clears throat> so, that show. That show. It's it's insane. Also, there's a there's a scene where there's, like, bisexual bisexuality isn't real because Kurt's trying to get Blaine to not want to date Rachel or, like, try dating a woman. Oh, yeah, and then he kisses Rachel, and he's like, yeah, I'm gay. I yeah. remember it, because I was like, yeah, Leah Michelle would turn me gay, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. I oh, know. I, I, Leah Michelle seems like the worst person to, like, work with in a professional environment. Totally, totally. Like, it feels like everyone on that show is kind of the worst, except for um, Chris Colfer and yeah. Darren Chris. Those yeah, da- two seem like they're fine. Yeah, I I mean, I have a huge crush on Darren Chris, so I might be biased. And I still have a huge crush on Darren Chris, so. The Filipino prince. He's such a prince. Yeah, he he said some dumb shit in the past, but he, he's mostly fine from what yeah. I gather. I, I have a he... lot of people that know him personally that yeah. have nothing bad to say about him. Is he Was he getting that Muppet thing? He was fine. I, I should probably watch it at some point. but He showed up, sang a song, left, shows up at the end, and he did his job. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what he's paid to do. So, anyway, Sound of Music. Of... Sound of Music? <laughs> Who was the MVP of this one? Um, okay. It's... I I went... I had... I'm so, I picked... I, like, wrote down two. I wrote, Christy is one of them, because yeah. she had a lot of to emotionally overcome, like, yeah. with her dad, which... I, I don't say it out loud. Presumably, he died. Um, yeah, they don't really elaborate. Which is probably makes sense. It's a, in the end, it's a kid show. So, um, no, it's a family show. It's a family show. <laughs> we have to appeal to the cute children. Um, I also wrote down Jacob because he, him reconnecting with all his friends, he just abandoned when he was a punk, when he was a depressed, annoyed teenager. It's like nice to see. I don't know. Um. There was a lot of things that I... There's always that one person that's a little too weird. Yeah. <laughs> in a, every one of these groups, there's one person that was probably really weird in high school, but they're just a weird kid, but then became an even weirder adult. So, so you're talking about me. That's what you're talking no, about. No, I'm no. Kidding. I'm talking about the one that's literally eating hummus with her fingers. Well, who ate hummus with her fingers? I don't know. They ordered um, Coney Dogs and Hummus because Michigan. Um, is, is that a thing in Michigan? Where you eat hummus with your hot dogs? Nope. Um, but they we do eat a lot of Coney's because we're trash people. I, I respect that. I mean, I eat a lot of hoagies. So. Um, I do not like hot dogs, so it's like, oh, you brought the one thing I hate to this event. Great, great. Thank you. Amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm not a meat guy in general. I kind of lean pescatarian most days. Yeah, that's valid. So it's like, everyone likes hot dogs, and we love burgers, and what brats, bring on the brats. So you need to get a Michigan, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, 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 I do. You're right. W- where should I go? I don't should know. Should I go to LA and see, uh, and see A Star is Born a few weeks early? So you want to time travel back to 2018? I would love to. I mean, there's we're bound to get another Star is Born remake in the next five years. Come on, they mm. do it every five weeks. 
Well, the first, uh, 73 was Barbara's, 73, 72. I don't remember the exact number. Around there. Then there was Judy Garland, then there was one before that. Yeah, so Judy's was 54, so that's about 20 years. And then the 1930s version, yeah. which is 20 years. So we'll get one in 2038. Ooh. You know what would be a really good idea for Patreon with cheese? For like one week, we do all four stars boards. Oh, that'd be great. I actually want a good excuse to watch those. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Because I've been um, meaning to watch we... the first three. And I know Barb's is terrible, but I'm sure it's hilarious at times. So, I mean, her hair is hilarious at times. And Chris Gustafsson is just playing himself as an alcoholic. Um, yeah. Um, Bradley Cooper did fine. I he like did. Bradley Cooper. Do you think he'll ever direct another film? I think he peaked. Um, unless he has, like, a really good idea, I don't think he'll direct again. He did a very good job is the thing. Yeah, he did, yeah, he did really good. And, I mean, Lady Gaga has acted, but I think he did good work with her. I mean, I haven't seen House of Gucci yet. Maybe she taught that. Yeah, I, I mean, doubt it. I, I doubt it because people say her accent isn't great. <laughs> I mean, Adam Driver, I love the guy. Big brick of a man. Very bricky um, man. His accent... His accent does not sound great either. Italian accents are really hard. If there's like a pinpoint of stereotype, the line is super thin. Yeah, I mean, we all know the peak Italian voice is Chris Pratt, um, noted Italian actor. Um, no, no, he said he was going to do Mario as a, nor- as a normal voice. Hey, yo, it's Mario. I'm coming up in here. <laughs> so is Mario, is Mario from Brooklyn? <laughs> Wait, Mario is from I, Brooklyn. <laughs> no, uh... Uh, he was from Brooklyn in the Bob Hoskins one. Luigi, yeah, what are we doing here, Luigi? It's... I don't know, Mario. I am Mario Mario. This is my brother, Luigi Mario. That movie's great. I haven't watched it. I want to see the clip of Dennis <gasps> Hopper as Koopa sticking his tongue monkey. out. And saying monkey. Um, and I've seen that the toads. Um, holy crap. What were those? Um, they just released released a work print version where it's like an hour longer, oh, um, and you get all the the extended scenes. Garrett Gilchrist, who I've worked with professionally a couple times, and also did the recobbled cut, released it. Um, very very good. If you haven't checked that out, check it out. It's not great. It's still the same movie, but if you're interested in weird film stuff, check that one out. Good to know. Um, so sound of music. Sound of music. Well, who's your MVP? I think the lady that played Maria that sings all the time while oh, she's yeah. at a ho- hospital. Um, My favorite moment's like the first two minutes where she's singing at the computer and they pan over to a male nurse just like with his back turned to the camera, but you know he's rolling his eyes. And my favorite is the obviously stage setup where she's like singing down the hallways and like the other receptionists are like, yeah, great job. <laughs> like polite claps. And I'm just imagining me being the guy with appendicitis, like, can you shut the fuck up, please? I'm so fucking tired. This this feels like a HIPAA violation in general, just for all, everything I'm having to deal with. If I was like, if I had mono and was stuck in a kind of hospital with a nurse that kept singing "Sound of Music" while she was doing shit to me, I'd like, M- lady, I hate the sound of music, and I feel like crap. Can you stop? <laughs> you sing Carousel instead. It's a better musical. I mean, it's not a better story, but it has better songs. Haven't seen it. Take your word for it. I'm very behind on musical theater, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I- you've at least seen a couple Sondheim shows. Yeah, I've seen West Side Story. <laughs> That's not a Sondheim show. That is a show that he did lyrics for. Uh, I'm trying to think of the Sondheim shows I've seen. You've seen Sweeney Todd? Yeah, I see. I saw a little bit of the uh, Angela Lansbury one, and I've seen the movie. And that movie's good. I like I, the I movie. I stand by that. I like the movie. People don't it like works it. I like it, it. It doesn't take place in reality in any way, so it no, works. It's, great. it's Tim Burton's weird fantasy world, and that does it well. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think Encore would do like the Sweeney Todd high school get together because no. it would probably make a better show than the high school one is the sad thing. I don't think high school would do Sweeney Todd. My high school almost did. Uh, my high school almost did like, no, we didn't do anything super gross. It was all pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the grossest we got well, was lame is, but everyone died ooh. without blood. So how was the orchestra in that one? Ah, uh, well, I, 
I was in band at the time, so I was friends with half of them. So I was like, good. It was a mixed bag. I can't remember it vividly. I actually have it on DVD so I could check it out and see if it sounds good. So <laughs> let's, just say the first, let's just say the first tech rehearsal never went well in my high school. I mean, I don't think the first tech rehearsal goes well for any performance. That's true. Yeah, but all the actors complained about it because they were just like, it's so hard to match up with the band. I'm like, it's because you've been doing using pre-recorded tracks this entire time while you yeah. were singing. You're not used to a live instrument performed by a person. So just give it a day and then you'll get used to it. And then by the show, they're good. It's like The first the first <coughs> tech rehearsal for all the freshmen is the most stressful time because they're like, it's never going to come together. And I'm like, guys, it's going to come together. This happens every goddamn year. So just yeah. push through. I mean, I get scared when that happens. I yeah, I would get scared too, but I try to reassure them like it's okay. I'm I've been in here I've been here way too long to not see it not go well. So Um Do you ever get like secondhand like nerves when they're about to perform yes. on the show? I get so nervous for them. I don't I mean I was nervous I, I wasn't an actor, um, so my right. main role was to move stuff on specific cues, which that made me nervous. But I I do get those, like, flashbacks, like, the show's about to start, is everything ready, like, is everything set up, are all all the props in place, are all the set pieces ready to go, are all the actors costumed, am I wearing enough black? People, people are crazy. Um, alright, what is your overall thoughts on this episode and your cheese rating? Um, I really like this episode, uh, it felt really genuine. And I, I, we didn't mention this, but they do have a part where one of the, uh, one of the actors mentions, talks about how he's HIV positive. Yes. Which is really amazing to see in a family show on a family streaming service. I agree. Bad respect to Disney for keeping that in. Yes. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a private guy. I don't know if I'd want that admission to be yeah. put onto a, a streaming platform for all to see. I don't know. I'm I, I just tend to like to keep my private life private. Yeah. Um I, this I think, isn't that they shouldn't have done it. It's like I don't know if I would have put that information out there as a human. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I I think the, I think I I respect it cuz I think coming out with it in a more out way it makes it easier to talk about. Yes. It's like how me too despite some of its issues it, its own complexities. It did make people more comfortable with talking about, like, sexual assault. Yeah, it's and, become more normalized. Yeah, it's know, become normalized, way. which I think we can slowly but surely normalize people talking about their HIV status, which is important because it's also, like, at a point you can't, tra- if, if you, there's a point in your health where you can't transmute it, so, mm-hmm. which a lot of people don't really know about, so <sighs> educate yourself, kids. Um, but yeah, Agreed. I liked it a lot. Um, I would, I, I, I'd like this show a lot. It's growing on me now. Um, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, uh, the Beauty and the Beast episode wasn't my favorite, but this one kind of got me back into it. I was like, okay, I, I see it's the, like, I, I connect, I connect with this like a little more now that I'm more into the season. Mm. Um, and, um, my cheese rating is I Google German cheeses. Um, so I'm going to give it Ziegel cheese because it sounded funny. Ziegel. Um, yeah, I thought this was a really good episode, so I can only give it Gouda. 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 Um, yeah, I agree with all your points. I feel like the emotional connection and Michigan, come on. Yeah. Like, talking about Flint a little bit and, like, that's not all there is to us, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. I thought that was a good go. Um, we'll see you next week as we talk about the next episode of Encore. So Say memories. goodbye, Liz. Bye-bye. Bye-bye will be one of the greatest treasures of my life.